Hey, this is Arthur Robinson Jr. I am the creator of PowerfulInterviews.com. I am the creator of Audio Secrets Training Event.com. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this phenomenal video. In this interview, you're going to experience life changing information that you will not find anywhere else. I have secured an incredible interview with a great friend of mine, successful businesswoman, the multi-millionaire. Her name is Joyce Ray. Joyce Ray is the top of the line real estate broker in the Los Angeles area. Joyce Ray, she sells high end luxury homes in the Malibu area and in Bel Air area and the Beverly Hills area and much, much more. So in this interview, you're going to hear exclusively how Joyce Ray, she breaks down lamest terms about how she sold Hugh Hefner's house. And Hugh Hefner has a life estate. And for those that don't know what a life estate is, that basically means when you purchase the high-end luxury home, you don't have access to the whole home until Hugh Hefner passes away. Also in this interview, Joyce Ray, she breaks down lamest terms how she sold $3 billion in sales in regards to high-end luxury real estate homes and much, much more. So remember, this is not BS information. The right information will change your situation. Wealthy people take advice from other wealthy people, and unfortunately, broke people take advice from broke people. So right about now, go get your pen and your pad, sit back and relax, and write down some notes. In this interview that I'm going to reveal to each and every one of you with my great friend, successful businesswoman, the multi-millionaire, the top of the line, high-end luxury real estate broker. Her name is Joyce Ray. This interview, it will change your life. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, check it out. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome the one, the only, the beautiful Joyce Ray to the show. Oh my goodness, Arthur. <laughs> I I want you to introduce me at all times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you, Joyce, for taking time out of your busy schedule to educate me and the listeners worldwide about high-end luxury real estate. I gladly appreciate it. I, I, I'm, I'm pleased that you asked me. To everyone that's listening, I highly recommend go and get your pen and your pad right now. My great friend Joyce Ray is going to break down layman's terms about the high-end luxury real estate in the California markets. Is that correct, Joyce? Yes, that's correct. Now, what I'd like to know, and can you explain to the listeners in layman's terms, who is the beautiful Joyce Ray? How long have you been in your powerful industry, and what is your expertise? Well, I got my real estate license in 1973, the year my son was born, actually. Um, but I started really working full-time um, in uh, at the end of 1974. And um, it, it's been a wonderful career. I have had the good fortune to have a, a represented some of the most important people in America and represent some of the most beautiful homes. And um, I have uh, uh, loved every minute of my career. I think I love it as much today as the day I entered it. Um, I have a background in business. I majored in business education at USC. Wow. Um, I have a master's degree from the university. Uh, I taught business law for four years in South Central Los Angeles uh, before I became a realtor. So um, uh, I... I uh, uh, have really enjoyed the ride and have been have had the real good fortune to find um, a career that I I love every minute of. Mm. Joyce, can you explain to the listeners how is your high net worth clients different from other people that purchase smaller homes? Well, in many ways, they're they're similar. Certainly, um, the basics are the same. I would say when you're dealing with with a wealthy individual, they typically have more advisors. They'll have a lawyer. They'll have an accountant. Um, they may have a business manager. 
so that you're dealing often with layers of individuals. Um, and they have maybe a set of criterion that's a little uh, different. Typically, a celebrity or a well-known entrepreneur will want uh, will will be looking for different things. Privacy becomes a very big factor with these groups, um, and um, so in that way, it's different. Um, and um, and also, the, the market isn't as straightforward. With expensive homes, a lot of the homes aren't on the market. So it takes someone that's very knowledgeable to know the market and know what's happening because in the less expensive properties, the information is um, uh, on the public record. The houses, many of them are easier to compare when you have unusual estate properties with certain Amenities that one house might have and another might not. It takes um, it takes you know some knowledge to be able to compare them to determine value. Mm. So you deal with a lot of high end real estate attorneys when it comes to closing those transactions. Yes, I deal with uh, often with attorneys with business managers. Um, and that sort of thing when it comes to high-end properties. Mm. Joyce, explain to the listeners, what is the best advice that you have ever received? Uh, the best advice that I've ever received. I think it dates back to uh, uh, kindergarten and the golden rule. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than that. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Mm. Now, I seen a powerful video that you were in, and you was explaining to the audience about listing presentations. Can you break that down in layman's terms? What exactly is a listing presentation? A listing presentation is where you're explaining to a potential seller, someone who's considering selling their house, what you can do for them to sell their house and and what their house is worth. So you go through the house carefully. You, you perhaps give them some advice on what they can do to make it um, ready to go to market. And you compare it to other similar properties and determine the probable sales price. And then you explain to them about how you go about marketing their house, what you will do to get them the best possible price for their house. Now, when you are marketing these high-end luxury real estate homes, do you spend a lot on marketing? I spend a lot. On the expensive homes, it, it can be very costly. The brochures, the public relations, the um, uh, the videos, and all of the uh, all of the the uh, production materials for marketing are very expensive. The staffing, yes, mm. it's expensive. It's an expensive uh, uh, profession. Now you mentioned the word videos. Now I know a couple of years ago Google bought YouTube for 1.6 billion dollars, so video is hot right now. Can you explain to the listeners the power of using video? That should entrepreneurs and business owners use video to expand their brand? Well, video, you know, is something that everybody understands. It's very visual. Uh, today, vis the you know, they always say a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, so, you know, the videos it, it take it a step further. And, you know, of course, there are some people that don't want videos because of the privacy factor when you get to very expensive homes. But it just depends on the seller and the situation, what they want. But uh, videos have become extremely popular uh, for uh, buyers to look at to determine whether they want to go and look at a house. Mm, wow. So once people like you, respect you, and trust you, that's when their minds are made up and they want to invest in you because you are the brand? 
Well, they choose because real estate is based on trust. I mean, any major business transaction is based on trust. You choose a bank that you trust, you choose a mate that you trust, and you choose a realtor that you trust. So, um, trust is a key factor. And and um, you know, I because I have um, you know a history of of putting my clients first above all else. Uh, they trust me. Mm. Now, you are the first beautiful lady of luxury high-end real estate. Can you explain to the listeners, how did you earn that name? Well, actually, interestingly enough, I... Um, uh, six years ago, I went. I was one of the first realtors to go to China because I saw the China Chinese market coming, and I felt they would be potential buyers for uh, my luxury properties. So I t- I spent several weeks traveling to Shanghai and Beijing to um, make connections there. And my company, Kowal Banker, has 100 offices in China as well. So I was able to speak at our offices. I I had a press conference there. I gave a presentation of all my listings at an art gallery in Beijing. And um, I made some wonderful contacts. And um, and they were the ones that gave me the title, the First Lady of Luxury Real Estate in the United States, which I was thrilled about. And and they, they wrote about me in the Chinese newspapers. So I, uh, that's where I was given the name. But, of course, I, you know, because I started, it sounds, when you were introducing me, Arthur, and people talk now about a company that only handles million-dollar houses, it doesn't sound so important because of the big numbers we're seeing today. But um, back in the late 70s, uh, it was unbelievable that that there was going to be a company that only handled a million dollars and up because the sale, there weren't many sales in that price category at that time. And it just shows you what a wonderful investment home ownership is. Mm. Now, in the high-end real estate market in the California areas, can... The top producers that are real estate agents and real estate brokers, can it be very aggressive? It's very can be very aggressive. Yes, I mean it's very competitive. There are large commissions at stake, and 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 you know uh, 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 many people can be um, overly aggressive. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, what differentiates you from the competition that is in the high-end luxury real estate market? Well, I think probably the fact that I've been doing this for a lifetime um, and, you know, know the market better than most other individuals. I know the sellers. I know the buyers. I know the properties. And that gives me a tremendous edge over the uh, over the competition. I also head the estates division for Cobalt Banker, and we're the number one company here in Los Angeles County. Wow. Um, so, you know, our previews international estates division is um, – um, a wonderful group of very talented professionals, and of course we are nationwide and worldwide. We have eighty four the Coal Baker has eighty four thousand sales agents around the world. Mm. Now we have successful entrepreneurs and business owners that is on this show today that is listening to you right now, and I have to ask you this question. What is your definition of marketing, and what does marketing mean to you? Marketing means the presentation of a property and the promotion of it uh, for its sale. Uh, that's as marketing as far as uh, as I'm concerned in the in the residential real estate world. So, would you say that marketing done right is the quickest path to the sale? Definitely. Definitely. You you know, communicating the information to the proper brokers, presenting the property in the uh, best light, um, that's what it's all about. Mm. So it's everything from your email communication and the design of that from the, the, the depth of your database. Joyce, can you explain to the listeners, do you have a lot of foreign clients in your network 
that purchases high-end real estate. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, today we see a huge amount of foreign clientele. Mm. I've represented a number of, uh, I've uh, represented members of the Saudi royal family. I've represented uh, uh, wealthy uh, European entrepreneurs. I've represented um, major American movie stars. (laughs) (laughs) Let's not forget our own great buyers right here in our backyard. (laughs) Uh, That's true. Joyce. What drives you to become successful? You know, I've always had um, the drive to be the best I can possibly be. And when I was teaching school, I wanted to be the best teacher. When I was, I worked as a flight attendant also, which I didn't mention earlier, and I wanted to be the best flight attendant. And as a realtor, my goal has always be the best possible Realtor. So, you know, when you have that goal, it means that you work tirelessly and, um, you know, you're constantly innovating and, you know, in order to stay on the top of your game. And that's really uh, what's enabled me to achieve the success that I have. Mm. What is the difference between a $20 million home versus a $100 million home? Well, there are a number of things that go into that. Um, one is the usually the square footage of the home, the size. Uh, second might be the location. Some locations are, are, are vastly preferable to others. Uh, other things that would make a difference could be the, um, uh, the detailing inside the house, um, the you know the cost of the finishes, uh, the design, the overall design of the house is certainly relevant. Um, uh, the views, uh, views have become extremely popular today, and 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 properties that have views uh, have certainly gone up in value, probably uh, at a faster rate than those that did not have views. Um, and then of course. Uh, address is extremely important. So there are a lot of factors that go into the mix that determine what kind of a sale price you will get and the differential between it. Obviously, a $20 million house is a beautiful house. Um, and, you know, and plus the fact you have a very limited clientele at $100 million. Um, you know, there's just a handful of people in the world. Well, they're, they're, well, right now, the approximate numbers of billionaires worldwide is hovering a little over 2,000. Mm. So when, you, when it comes to 100 million, most people aren't going to spend that money unless they, uh, they have wealth approaching that amount of money. I mean, maybe somebody with seven hundred million dollars or six hundred would buy a hundred million dollar house, but um, you know, it just depends. But then it's not just a question of how much wealth you have. A lot of people that maybe have a billion dollars don't want to put a hundred million into a house. Hundred million of it, they they may want to put that in an office building or you know, an investment of some kind. So. Um, when it comes to selling a house for a hundred million, uh, there you know there are just a, you know a handful of people that that will do it. Mm. But we're seeing more and more sales in that price category all over the country. And of course, the Playboy Mansion just closed yesterday, and one of my colleagues here in the office sold it, and it sold for a hundred million dollars. Wow. Now, Hugh Hefner, the caveat is he has to stay in the house, correct? Yes, he has what is known as a life estate, and that happens occasionally here, in our, in, and it's a situation where someone, where someone purchases a house and it's subject to someone else living there, and so you're responsible for maintaining the house as a landlord, but you don't, get, um, you don't really get control or ownership of the house until the person passes away. You are experiencing a life-changing, powerful interview, and you are hearing it first from Arthur Robinson Jr.'s PowerfulInterviews.com. Now, you sell a lot of high-end luxury real estate 
in the expensive California areas, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, and Malibu, how do those high-end luxury property estates differ in those areas? Well, the neighborhoods uh, the neighborhoods are a little different. Um, the Bel Air is uh, in the hills overlooking. There are many of the properties there do have views. Um, uh, Beverly Hills is a city. <clears throat> Bel Air is in the city of Los Angeles, and the neighborhoods Bel Air, Brentwood, Pacific Palisades are all the city of Los Angeles. They're just different names for residential sections in those neighborhoods. And of course, Malibu is on the water. You have either oceanfront properties or you have properties overlooking the ocean. Mm. Wow. And I would say Malibu is approximately 45 minutes, depending on traffic, 45 minutes to an hour from Beverly Hills in terms of your, your drive. Do you sell a lot of high-end luxury homes that have electronic smart houses? Oh, yes. That's become very popular. Most of the new houses are smart houses. You can operate them on your iPad anywhere in the world. Explain to the listeners, what is the purpose of having a smart house? A smart house is utilizing all the latest technology. You can, um, let's say you have a friend that wants to go and, and stay at your house. You can, you know, turn on the lights, <laughs> <laughs> even though you might be in another part of the world. So, um you know, it it just it, it it makes it easy. You can take your phone and you can you can turn the T V set on or the the coffee maker on or whatever it is you want to do. It just it it's 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 a great way to be able to operate everything in your house. Mm. Joyce, can you explain to the listeners from your perspective how do you dominate an international high-end real estate market? What would you say would be the formula of executing that? Well, it's, you know, it's been a lifetime of work, uh, uh, you know, and, and you know, working working really hard and, and the customers knowing that, that you're going to be their champion. And... Um, you you grow a network of people that trust you and know you, and your name becomes more and more known as a result of that. And um, uh, you know, I've I've grown my business organically, not through a reality television show. Uh, I have appeared on television on occasion on NBC Open House or an extra or on because I've represented celebrity homes and uh or well known estates. Last year I sold the famous Goldwyn estate, I sold Pickfair, the famous Mary Pickford estate, I sold the Harold Lloyd estate. So I've sold a number of the most famous estates here over the years and you know, there's been a, a, you know, certain publicity connected with those sales. Sales. Um, and of course, uh, as I say, that a lot of the television shows now feature beautiful homes on on open house programs. But um, it's I, I would say it's a combination of things: gaining the respect of my colleagues, uh, uh, achieving a lot of record breaking sales over the years, um, and uh, and working really hard. There's no substitute for hard work, Arthur. Mm. So there's no substitute for experience. Experience and hard work, I would say. Mm. Joyce, I wrote down some powerful words, five being the highest and one being the lowest. So you can rate them in your own powerful way. Are you ready? Yes. Accountability. High, very highest. Perseverance. Also very high, highest. Leverage. Leverage, uh, important, not as important as the first two. Value. Very important. Health. Well, wealth is important when it comes to a buyer, I guess. 
but I don't know that that's important in terms of my business. <laughs> health. Well, that's the highest. You can't do anything without that. Family. That's very important. Highest. Love. Well, since I love most everybody, that's the highest of all. Money. Well, money is money is important, but it's not the most important. All right, that was good. That was real good. Joyce, explain to the listeners, do you follow innovation in your business model? I, uh, yes, I, 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 can't, um, I can't have enough innovation in my business. Mm. I always look for a new angle. Wow. This is an incredible interview, and I appreciate you coming on my show today. Well, I'm so happy that you asked me. Joyce, explain to the listeners... How can entrepreneurs and business owners get out of their comfort zones? Because I know that some people's comfort zones are actually their failure zones. Well, you're right. You sometimes have to take a risk, um, and and that's that's not easy to do. Um, but uh, and and sometimes it doesn't work. By the way, taking a risk may not work. I think you have to be I think you have to weigh things very carefully when you take a risk mm-hmm. and look at the pros and the cons and 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 then then make a decision. I think you need maybe to have trust have a trusted advisor that you listen to. Uh someone if you you're considering doing something that that has a risk t- attached to it, then then you need to get some advice from someone that can be helpful. Mm. Joyce, explain to the listeners, from your experience, the wealthy individuals that you represent that are your clients, do they only invest in high-end real estate, and do they actually deal with family offices? Well, uh, I would say both. So I, I represent investors who who uh, you know purchase and develop properties, and then the family offices have become very important for wealthy individuals, where you know it's a a, a, a group of advisors or attorneys who do nothing but uh, you know ha- help um, uh, ultra high net worth individuals and and families. Mm. Joyce, let's talk about money. Now, I know money is not value. Money is just a facilitator to do transactions. How would you define money? I don't know what how you would define it. I mean, it's uh, dollar bills, I guess. <laughs> well, huh, that's about it. <laughs> do you focus on income-producing Real estate, and do you have income producing real estate in your current portfolio well i I frequently have properties available for lease uh residential properties, and i have sold um I, I sold uh, a, a beautiful uh, part of the Gagosian Gallery here in Beverly Hills um, a couple of years ago and got the highest price per square foot off Rodeo Drive. But I'm not an expert on commercial or income-producing properties. I've, I also sold I've sold a few apartment buildings over the years. But my expertise is really beautiful homes. Mm, wow. Joyce, I love reading, and reading is a lost art today. Can you explain to the listeners what books do you like to read and what books do you recommend for the listeners to read? 
Well, I think I, I I will say Arthur that reading is a luxury for me because with the the demanding world of emails and contracts that I live in, most of my reading time is spent, you know, creating brochures, uh examining contracts, etc. So, um when I have some free time to read, um uh it's rare. So uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to get through. I've got two books on my bedside table that I'm trying to get through, and I haven't gotten very far on them. I, I tend to read only nonfiction because I love the movies. I was married to a well-known film star. Oh, and wow. So I, um, you know, I... I've always the movies have always been a big part of my life and I feel if I miss an important film I really am out of date. So I get my fiction mainly from 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 movies. So when I read, I read nonfiction typically. So the two books I'm trying to get through right now and I'm I, I'm struggling with, one is called Talk Like Ted which is kind of a, it's a fabulous book, and it summarizes, I don't know if, if you're familiar with the wonderful TED Talks, yes. but they're, you know, really exciting to watch. And um, this guy kind of summarizes in his book the really great talks and why they are great. So it's a really interesting book. And the other book that I am reading is The Brain's Way of Healing, and this is an incredible a book by a Dr. Deutsch, and he talks about various uh, medical, um, really, breakthroughs about how you can control your brain to even even be able to control the pain impulses coming into your brain. It's absolutely fascinating. But anyway, I love to read um, nonfiction. Mm. So... Not necessarily real estate related. I mean, uh, not that I would shy away from a good book, a good real estate book, but, um, you know, I like, I, I have a wide variety of interests and, uh, I, I, um, you know, enjoy, I, I love to travel. I'm headed to the, uh, Vintage Car Show in Pebble Beach in Carmel this weekend, which is a very exciting event. A lot of my clients buy, uh, magnificent antique cars up there. Oh, wow. When you developed your real estate team, what was your thought process in developing your real estate team? And do you have sales meetings every day? Oh, no. No, no. I want them out showing houses and making deals. We can't be having meetings every day. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Well, I mean, as a head of the Estates Division, we have um, previous international sales meetings. Um, But for just my personal team of agents that work closely with me, um, we have meetings, I would say, once every six weeks or so. Mm. So you have to hire the right team to build your dream. Well, that's true. I, I, but you know, I, I worked, uh, you know, as a single agent for many, many years. It's only in probably the last uh, seven or eight years that I've developed a team, and I've enjoyed it very much because I've, I've helped a lot of people grow their business. And it's very rewarding. And plus, I'm able to cover more ground because of my partnerships. Mm. Joyce, do you make a lot of money when the high-end real estate market is declining? Uh, you know, it's, that's a really interesting question, Arthur. And, and in fact, not necessarily do I make any more. No, uh, I wouldn't say that. But but it does enable me maybe to do better than the average agent who does not deal in high end. Because obviously, if I make one big deal, it can kind of make my year. And um, uh, and you know, wealthy people may not be as affected as affected by a downturn. But um, uh, you know, generally speaking, when when if if the market is is slowing down or not doing well, that happens in all price levels. I mean, so you know, typically, if if the if the overall market is not good, um, it, it won't mean that I will necessarily 
I mean, I think we all, every agent, no matter what price category they're in, is is going. Their income is going to go down. In other words, mm. my only advantage is I recall back in '95, which was a very bad year for real estate. I I made I had a, got a particular important client that year and made a couple of deals with him, and I had a good year. And you know, most everybody was crying the blues. So yes, that can happen, but typically, um, you know, our income uh, uh, will go along with any other realtor's income. Joyce, you are a phenomenal top producer in the high-end luxury real estate market. Can you explain to the listeners when you actually sell a high-end house? That is seventy-two million or one hundred and thirty million dollars. What commissions are you experiencing from that tra- transaction? Well, a commission is negotiable, Arthur. So it usually varies, um, uh, and it depends on the situation. And typically, when you make these big, you know, it's not just one realtor involved. There's usually uh, you know, s- several agents at a minimum, sometimes three or four agents involved in a transaction. So, um, you know, the commissions are not as large as people think because uh, because they are uh, split up and they're often negotiated. So, you know, you start out with a certain amount, you may not end up with a certain amount. So, um you know, it just depends. It just just depends on the situation, the offer you bring. I once had my favorite real estate story is I once had a property listed at a five percent commission, and the seller was so happy with the offer I brought them that they raised it to six percent. Oh wow! Now that that happened once. <laughs> so it actually gave you an incentive. Yeah, they they raised they raised the commission, and and that was wonderful. But, um, uh, yes, I I mean, uh, that doesn't happen very often. So, but commissions are negotiable. That's a very important thing. That's printed right on the contracts. Joyce, you built a phenomenal reputation in the high-end luxury real estate market. Do you meditate? in the morning and at night, and do you reflect on the lifestyle you created for you and your family? Well, I have a huge amount of gratitude for my career and the great satisfaction that it has given me, Arthur. Um, And uh, meditation is a fabulous practice, and I wish I could say I did it every morning and night. Uh, I do try to do it occasionally. I am not as disciplined as that. I do try to, I am pretty good at my yoga exercise, which is kind of a form of meditation for me. And um, I try to do that as frequently as I can. You are experiencing a life-changing, powerful interview, and you are hearing it first from Arthur Robinson Jr.'s PowerfulInterviews.com. Joyce, I appreciate you coming on my show today because the whole premise of my show is to educate entrepreneurs and business owners worldwide that they can live a fulfilling life, but they have to be open to these important principles. So I don't like what I see what's on the news, so I create my own news. Well, I think that's a very good idea. I've often thought we needed a good news newspaper. (laughs) (laughs) Joyce, explain to the listeners from your experience, what would you say is your best client? My best client? Well, there's the best client that buy and sells a lot of houses and you get to deal with them a lot. And then there's the best client that is really fun to work with and you love as a human being. So um, maybe they just bought and sold once or twice. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to describe. I can think of a lot of different people that I would call best clients. Joyce, what has been your most powerful record with selling high-end luxury real estate? 
Well, probably when you put it in those terms, Arthur, in 1990, I sold a house uh, just under $20 million in Bel Air. Wow. And at that time, it was a huge price. It was it was a, such a huge price, and it was it it held the record for ten years. Now, usually when you 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 know you do the biggest sale in the United States, or you do the biggest sale at the time in your neighborhood, or whatever it is, you know I've watched the numbers climb. Obviously, from a million dollars to I think the highest sale today in the United States is. Uh, it was, I believe, 140 million, 147 million in the Hamptons uh, was a property, and that is the current record in the United States. But then there are properties in Europe that have sold for several hundred million dollars. So, um, uh, you know, and and when you look at those numbers compared to when I started and and I sold. Uh, the Sonny and Cher mansion originally for a million two in 1976, and then 4.2 in 1978, and it was like the most unbelievable sale that anybody could ever imagine. And then you look at these numbers today, you know, it's just it's hard to it's hard to you know fathom how fast the residential market has gone up in a relatively short period of time. But on the other hand. Um, if you ask for the single one, this sale in Bel Air was the record in Bel Air for a decade, for 10 years. It was, a, in other words, nothing sold for more than that until um, I think the year 2000. 20, yeah. So it went for 10 years um, from 1990 to 2000. So that was that was a pretty big record. It was a phenomenal property, by the way. But. Um, you know, it's interesting. But I, I always say records are made to be broken. Mm. Wow. Just like Usain Bolt, nobody can beat him. <laughs> I got to meet him. <laughs> there was a lucky moment. <laughs> I said, I'd like to be as fast as you are in real estate. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Joyce, what advice would you give an entrepreneur that is really anxious and in breaking into the high-end luxury real estate market. And let's just say they're coming from the Big Apple, New York City, or they're coming from Hawaii, and they want to come and work for your company as a real estate agent. What advice would you give him or her where they are really anxious to sell high-end real estate where they're selling high in real estate, let's say at the seventy million to one hundred million dollar level or higher. Well, you know, it's a it's a combination of things that enable you to do this. I would say the number one thing is education. You, you can't, you know. I see a lot of people with um, with graduate degrees. I see a lot of people with law degrees. I mean, education is is certainly helpful. Uh, I would say secondarily, it's um, connections, um, you know, people that you meet along the way, and, uh, you know, that's an important part of our business is is having uh, the contacts um, the, uh, for, with people that buy and sell these important homes. So, um, you know, there are a number of factors. Um, uh, when you start out in real estate, you kind of have to have a bit of a nest egg because, of course, you're relying on commissions. Mm -hmm. So you have to have enough money when you start out to be able to m make you feel comfortable, I would say, for at least a year while you're learning the ropes and getting started. Joyce, explain to the listeners, what do you like to do for fun? What do I like to do for fun? So many things. Um, uh, I love I love traveling. Uh, although traveling takes me away from my business, but I have had uh, uh, the good luck to go to so many wonderful, exciting places around the world in my lifetime. Um, so I enjoy that a lot. Uh, I love the theater. I love the opera. I love the beach. I love the mountains. Um, uh, uh, and I love my friends. I love sp spending time with my friends. I love trying new restaurants. 
Um, uh, and, I, and I mentioned already that I love the movies. Uh, I love the out of doors. Mm. Wow. Uh, so uh, there are an awful lot of things I like, Arthur. When you celebrate your birthday... I didn't mention art. I love the art world. Oh, wow. Well, that's yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah, I love the art world. I, I've, I've gone to Art Basel a number of years, which is fascinating. And um, Yes, I can't learn enough about the art world. And we have a fabulous new museum, the Broad Museum here in Los Angeles, which is worth a trip. It's just incredible. Wow. When you celebrate your birthday, do you celebrate your birthday with your clients as well as with the men and women that are on your real estate team? Well, I've done both. I've done both. Um, I Last year, my real estate team gave me a lovely party, but I, I celebrated a big, I, I had a wild and crazy one. I, the, my, my favorite recent birthday was a couple of years ago, I went to Berlin. I'd never been to Berlin.